Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we are going to take a look at some stabilized binoculars. These are Kite Optics. They're APC stabilized binoculars in the 12 by 42 version. These are very unique in that there's not a lot of binoculars out there that offer the stabilization. So we were really curious to see how they performed, how the stabilization really affects the overall image quality. We were very, very surprised in that and how well these performed. But we wanted to go over a lot of the features of these Kite Optics APC stabilized binoculars, how they performed for us out in the field when we did our testing, and some of the pros and cons here of these binoculars. We really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And check out our website, backwardspursuit.com. I'll put links to all that down in the description. There's a ton of other gear reviews over on the website, so go check those out. And I'll put a link to the Kite Optics APC stabilized binoculars so you can check them out for yourself. Let's get started. All right, the Kite Optics APC Stabilized Binoculars. These come in a 12 by 42, which is what these are. They also come in a 16 by 42, and then a 10 by 30 and a 12 by 30 if you want a more lightweight and compact option of this same binocular. The APC stands for Angle Power Control. That's a really cool function of the Kite Optics binoculars here. How that works is you've got this lever right here, and that's what controls the stabilization and gives it the power uh, turning on or off here. So if you want to turn that on, you just pull that lever like that and then it, it turns on the angle power control function and the stabilization. So how that works is you turn that on and in the, when it's in this vertical position like this, the unit stays off and doesn't burn through your battery power, which is awesome. Now if you want to go ahead and use them, you turn them like you're going to use them like that and you'll see that the green light turns on now and the stabilization is activated. Turns back off when you put it back down and the red light blinks so you know that it's in standby and it's not burning through your battery power. Flip it back up, green light turns back on and you're stabilizing it again. So really cool that way. And you can turn that off permanently if you're in a store for long term and that's gonna conserve the battery even more. What's also cool about this is that you've got two battery compartments. It takes AA batteries. So two on this side and two on that side and it only uses one side uh, and the second side is reserve batteries. So you've got, an, a, if you want to use them, you can, you don't have to, but you can fill both sides and have 60 minutes on one side and then another 60 minutes if you run through those batteries and then want to swap them out and use the second pair of AA batteries. So up to 120 minutes of use on the batteries as you put them in here. Now, at 28.9 ounces with both battery compartments full, they're still very lightweight, especially for a stabilized binocular. And if you want to just take one, if you don't want to take the extra batteries, it comes in at 27.2 ounces, and that's on my scale here. So either way, you still have a very comparable uh, 10 by 42 or 12 by 42 in this case binocular that is very lightweight still, so you're not gaining a whole bunch of weight versus a standard binocular that doesn't have the stabilization feature in it. Now they're also nitrogen gas filled and waterproof and fog proof at the IPX7 rating. So awesome, you can submerge them at one meter for up to 30 minutes. So they're still going to be waterproof and fog proof, which is really critical if you're using them in a hunting situation or even out birding or, or nature watching or anything like that and the storm rolls in. And so you know that you're protected, you're not gonna have to worry about uh, the water, them not being waterproof or being damaged in that regard. Now size-wise, they are a little bit on the bigger side. That is a downside. As you can see, they're kind of a unique shape. They're very, uh, they don't have a typical bridge design like a lot of binoculars. You can see here, uh, this is a pair of the GPO Passion HDs. You know, a typical binocular looks like that, whereas these don't have the two barrels. It's all one solid piece and the stabilization is of course inside of there. It's all protected in there. They do have a nice rubber armor on the, the, the give them really good grip. Um, but size wise, they are a little bit bigger. Um, this is, uh, the, the, the Passion HDs are on the larger side of a 10 by 42. They're not really, really big, but they are on the larger side. But these do give you an extra inch or so. Um, so they, they are a little on the tall side, a little bit bulkier as you can see. They're just a little, a little bigger there, but 
They're not overly big for, for what they offer you. The eye cups here are really nice and smooth. They really surprised me that way. There's not any play in there. You've got one, two, three, four positions in the eye cups, which is real nice. Uh, so you have some options that way. Now the focus wheel here is kind of unique. Most of your binoculars have the focus wheel up kind of where this, uh, the power button is here, the power lever. This one is actually, it's really ergonomic in that your hands are right here. So they just naturally go right to where that is and it, it makes it real easy to use. I was surprised how much I liked the location of that focus uh, mechanism, that focus wheel. It worked really well. I did find it to be a little bit spongy. Um, it's not too bad, but it was a little bit spongy. There's not any play in it per se, but it, there can be a little bit of just a spongy feeling when you're moving back and forth there. It could be a little bit uh, improved, but it's really not too bad at all. So that was one thing I noted that could be a small improvement on, improvement on these guys, um, something that we noted during testing. As far as image quality with these, something I really wasn't sure about. Honestly, I had no idea what to expect out of these binoculars, but I was very pleasantly surprised. Overall, edge-to-edge -edge clarity was, was very good, way better than I expected. Overall clarity was, was very good, a little bit cloudy on the edges. There's a little bit of a, you can note a little bit of cloud, say on the outer 20% or so, uh, but not a, not a lot of de degradation in image quality as you went to the edge. Uh, not obviously as, as much of an, uh, a high-end optic as something like a Swarovski NL Pure or any real high-end binocular but they were better than some of the binoculars in the $750 to $1,000 range that we tested uh, side by side. So they were very, very impressive as far as their, their image quality. I was surprised there and very happy with what they were. Now with a binocular like this, being a, tw a, t a 12 by 42, or if, especially if you went to the 16 by 42, that image stabilization makes all the difference in the world. The do, these do not have a way to attach them to a binoc or to a tripod. Uh, there's no you know threading here. There's I don't I'm not aware. Well, maybe the Swarovski strap would go over the top of this, but then it would block the the focus mechanism. So you potentially might be able to figure out a way to get these on a tripod. But the point of the stabilization is that you don't need to. So you're saving the weight of having to take something to put these on a tripod, and it does just that. It does a fantastic job. If you've not used stabilized binoculars before, and they're, they're awesome. Now, one thing that's unique about these is the way that the eye cups adjust here. They're kind of interesting in that they, they are on a hinge right here and right here. And so when you adjust them, it's just those eye cups that are moving. Of course, this is all one solid body. And if you're used to a binocular like this, the whole thing is moving, which that can't happen with these. So they've just got that, that uh, the pivot point right there in the middle. And so if you need to make that adjustment, you can go there or there. They're nice and tight, so they're not moving on you accidentally, which is real nice. But they do kind of, they're kind of interesting and they move together. You only have to grab one and then the other side moves as well. And then on the diopter adjustment here, unfortunately it doesn't lock. I wish it did. Um, I always like a, a locking diopter. That's one of my common complaints with a lot of binoculars out there. It doesn't lock but it doesn't move very easily either so i'm not too worried about that one moving on me unintentionally so it's functionally going to be just fine but i do wish it locked so those are the kite apc stabilized binoculars overall really impressed with the optical performance there was that little bit of cloud around the edge but it wasn't too bad the the, the optical quality was very surprising and better than we thought it was going to be the stabilizing function is awesome it does a phenomenal job of allowing you not have to take the tripod if you don't want to and you don't you don't need to have that the stabilization that tripod offers because of the electronics that have built into this the auto on and off is absolutely awesome it works really well gives you good long battery life and we had just a really good experience with these but there's there's not a lot of the stabilized binoculars out there and and so there's not a lot to compare them to uh, the optics I found to be very good, but not as good as say something in a similar price bracket that like these GPO Passion HDs, they've got a better optical performance, but they don't have the stabilization. So you want to be able to stabilize those on a tripod or something of that nature. So you're giving up a little bit of your optical performance with these, but you gain a whole lot in the stabilization. So for me, if I don't have or don't want to take a tripod, then these are absolutely awesome. 
if I already have a tripod and I'm going to be putting my binoculars on a tripod, you can do a little bit better as far as optical performance uh, for a similar price point, but you are going to lose that if it's not on a tripod. So there's pros and cons there, but these are great for a lot of different things. And they have that IPX7 rating for being submerged for 30 minutes at the one meter also. So great option there. But I'd love to hear what you think about stabilized binoculars. If you have any experience with them, or just have some thoughts on whether or not these are something that's going to take off in the market, or we're going to go back to just having the standard binoculars. So thanks for watching here today. Drop those questions or comments. Love to hear from you. We'll see you next time.